Hey guys, welcome to my Lear classes. This is Ganesh Pujari and in my today's class, let us try understand the classification of administrative actions or powers or functions, whatsoever name the question can come. Let us try understand the three different classification that is legislative functions, administrative or executive functions and judiciary functions in this particular video. Uh, let's get into the first slide. Let us start the discussion with legislative functions. Now, who is making laws? Laws are made by legislation or parliament. Then what is the role of administrative laws here? Now, there are few laws which are made by administration authorities also. Now, that is what we are going to discuss. But to understand that, we need to understand two types of legislations. They are supreme legislations and subordinate legislations. What are supreme legislations? Supreme legislations are those legislations which are made by the legislature or parliament, which are the highest authority when it comes to legislation. Does administration has any role in making supreme legislations? That is a question. And in Indian constitution, we have a beautiful provision in the form of ordinance where we have article 123 which gives the power to the president of india to make ordinance and article 230 which gives powers to the governor of particular state to make ordinance these are basically supreme legislations made by the president or the governor and that is the way administrative law getting power to make legislations but remember it has its own limitations there is timeline available for that uh, the second category is subordinate legislations which is quite common uh, in the form of delegated legislations or quasi legislative functions. Now, the delegated legislation concept I have discussed in detail. I have series of videos in uh, my administrative law classes. So go through them. The case law that I am referring for legislative function is the Blackpool Corporation versus Locker case. What happened here? The Ministry of Health got lot of power under wartime prison regulation. So the law gave power to a particular ministry. Remember that concept very clearly. What to do during war, he can take control of houses and while taking such control, they took the control over furnitures also. Now the question is whether they can take control over furniture or not. And it was held that they can control over the furniture also because the wartime prison regulation gives power to the minister of health so that way it is his executive function or administrative function and he can do that that is the case law you can mention with that i am moving on the next category is administrative functions which are the residual functions of administration now the government functions which are neither legislative nor judiciary are administrative functions and few of the important characteristics of administrative functions are they are based on government policy and decisions are subjective rather objective the rules of evidence and procedure don't bind administrative authority and administrative authority can take decisions even when there is absence of statutory power this is without breaching provisions of law then the delegated and subdelegation of functions is allowed and discretionary power is available with the authority this is one of the important feature that discretionary power is available and they are not too much worried about statutory powers uh, they are not strictly bound with the principle of natural justice uh, for that you can mention the case law of franklin franklin versus minister of town and country planning or uh, Stevens case where they have created a new town and the judiciary said it is okay to make and they are not always looking at principle of natural justice if an administrative order is unreasonable then it is invalid uh, that is one of the important principle you need to remember their action should be reasonable and writ of judiciary and prohibitions are not always available against administrative authorities all the five writs are available however these are the two writs which are not always available now when it comes to kinds of administrative powers there are two important kinds discretionary powers and ministerial powers discretionary powers i have made series of videos including the controls you can go through my videos to understand the administrative discretion ministerial powers this is mostly making of decisions issuance of orders or execution of acts now i have five important illustration for administrative functions like an order of preventive detention an order setting up a commission of enquiry an order granting sanction to prosecute a public servant power to issue license and an order of withdrawal of prosecution all these are an example for administrative functions the third category of functions are judicial functions and we need to remember three important aspects when we are discussing judicial functions they are judicial functions quasi judicial functions and duty to act judicially now what are judicial functions 
there are two types one is list and the second one is quasi list what is list whenever two independent parties coming in front of an administrative authority they are known as list whenever there is one party is belonging to authority the other side it is citizen or employee then they are known as quasi list so whenever there is a judicial function administrated by a ministers uh, there should be four processes to be completed as per donuk more committee they are presentation by both the parties to be completed that is the first step and second step if the dispute is arising because of question of fact both the parties need to present the evidence third one if the dispute is arising out of question of law in that case argument to be made and final decision to be taken based on the law of land that is for judicial functions second one quasi judicial functions the judgment to be made based on the first two parts of danuk more committee that is presentation to be made by both the parties and the dispute if it is question of fact the evidence to be presented the case law that i am referring here is rich versus balvin what happened there was a authority available with a particular officer to terminate any of the head constables and one of the head constable was terminated now the head constable came in front of the quasi judicial authority saying that he has not been heard which is one of the right that he has having that is presentation by both the parties as he was not heard his right to be heard was violated so the court said the decision taken by the authority was not valid the third aspect duty to act judicially in this i am referring the case law of nakuda ali versus jayrathe what happened here a license of a textile was cancelled and uh, before cancelling there was no hearing available with the owner of that particular textile so he came to judiciary and said that i have not been heard but the judiciary said the cancellation of license is a administrative order it is not a judicial decision so we are not interfering and such order is a valid order now what are the examples for quasi judicial functions an order of assessment of tax cancellation of license dismissal of employees and disciplinary proceedings all of this can be considered as the examples for quasi judicial functions you might be thinking if the administrative authorities are getting so much of powers or functions then who is going to control them there is a control mechanism which i am going to explain in my next class uh, please subscribe my channel please like share and comment my videos all the very best for your exams and thank you so much for watching me